Alright, so I have been talking for one hour and 54 minutes, answering questions submitted by you. Uh, I have 27 questions left, all from Jay Gaz Mom, and so I'm going to try to burn through these fairly quickly and keep this around 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, what is your older son's name? His name is David. Uh, how many times have you moved in your life? Uh, I counted it up. I've moved six times, uh, which is about an average of once every seven years, which is kind of what they say, whoever they are. Um, <clears throat> but I started off in an apartment building where I was born in a place called River Grove, Illinois. Uh, my family moved to Streamwood, Illinois when I was uh, before it was before I was in kindergarten, and my my whole elementary school uh, was there in Streamwood. Um, I loved it. I would not trade that house that I grew up in for anything. I have extremely strong memories of of good times there, and uh, that's probably where I identify most when I think about growing up. Um, when I got into high school, we moved about a mile and a half to a, a brand new single family home. It was kind of my mom's dream to to be in a bigger house. Uh, we were in a ranch house growing up and so we did that. We lived there for just a couple of years. Uh, my mom got sick and uh, passed away when I was 18 and, and then my my dad couldn't keep up the, the big house by himself so we we moved to kind of a smaller house and uh, I, w I lived there as I went through college, and right out of college, like literally two months after I graduated, I got married, and uh, my wife and I moved into a townhome uh, about another two miles from there. So was was within within range. You know, I was always pretty close to the same area growing up. Um, after the townhome, uh, we were there about five years, I think, and then we. We were ready to move into a single-family home. We moved to a place called South Elgin, Illinois. Uh, we had a pretty nice place, and uh, we were there over 10 years. Uh, that's where Matt was born. And af after um, uh, my wife stopped working for a while due to some illness, and we said, you know, let's let's downsize. The economy's not not doing so great, but we're paying a lot for this house and it's just too much so we downsized we've been living we were renting a place for about three years and now we're uh, headed back the economy starting to pick up again we got a really really great um, deal I guess you could say on a new construction big house and I'm really proud of it so I'm sharing that with you all here even though I don't always like to talk about the personal stuff but uh, this will be the sixth move in my life and I don't actually intend to ever move again question 26 from Jay Gaz mom what foreign countries have I visited I've only visited one and that would be Canada I flew to Toronto uh, for four days I think it was flew in on a Monday flew out on a Thursday basically went straight to the the client offices worked there in the office um, ate at like two two restaurants outside of the office itself the office had like a really nice cafeteria in the building so I really didn't get to see too much um, although one night I did take a subway I think it was a subway they might have called it something else to a museum and it was like uh, it was dark outside but I think it was kind of early because it was in the winter and like I walked around a museum um, can't even tell you what museum it was for like an hour by myself and then went back to my hotel and that's it I've never been outside the US other than that uh, 27 if I wrote a fictional novel what genre would it be I love the post-apocalypse genre but I think it it would be modern fantasy uh, because I would want to write what I know about but also uh, most of the role-playing games that I enjoyed playing were set in modern fantasy and I think I've got some uh, some ability to tell a story in the modern day 
uh, and have and, and introduce things that will make it seem fantastical, uh, you know, just under the surface of reality as as most people see it now and nowadays. Kind of you know Harry Potterish, but a little bit more darker, a little more grown up. Twenty eight. If your life was made into a movie, what genre would it be? I don't actually know what the genre is called, but I would definitely set it. You know probably like around my preteen years, like 10, 12 years old, uh, and it would be kind of like a stand by me type of story, you know, a group of kids out on their own, having some adventure, coming of age sort of movie, uh, because, you know, those are the memories that are, that I'm most fond of in my own life. I was invulnerable, uh, I did all kinds of crazy stuff and got away with it and had grand adventures in my head and in real life and uh, so that's the genre that that I would focus on 29 how much sleep do you really get each night um probably about four to six hours it depends um, when I'm at work I just kinda work my butt off and try to get in as much as I can so that I can have the weekend to myself and on the weekend after the family goes to bed I like to play my games and have my own time uh, so, for example, right now it's almost 1 a.m. and I'm still recording Q&A for you guys and then I'll probably edit this video, um, probably go to sleep, maybe by 2, I would say, and Matt will definitely be up by 8 or a little bit earlier. So max I'll get is about 6, six hours tonight, I would say. I'm sleeping a little bit longer than I used to when I was young, but uh, yeah, you know, I probably actually probably after I record it takes me a while to wind down so like I will listen to a podcast and play like a simple iOS game in the dark until I fall asleep or read uh, so even after I finish you know recording but like you just get nothing done when you're sleeping you can't be productive and so um, yeah that's just kind of how I've been for a long time when I when I first got married, I used to work a basically nine to five programming job, go get dinner uh, like McDonald's, and then go to another place and work from about seven to one or two a.m., and then drive home and do it again. Uh, so if I'm not working, I'm playing. Uh, so, yep. Question thirty: What is your favorite pizza topping? So aside from California Pizza Kitchen, I talked about the, the tostada lime chicken pizza. That's kind of a work of art in itself. But if you talk about classic pizza, uh, what I've been eating for the past two years is thin crust mushroom. Just cheese and mushroom, nothing else on it. Um, I've been on that kick for, for a while. Before that, it was pepperoni. But right now, my favorite is mushroom. Would you rather fly the Millennium Falcon or the USS Enterprise? I can't even imagine that anyone has to ask this question. The Millennium Falcon, by far, hands down. I mean, you, you nobody flies the US Enterprise. It kind of flies itself. You just go, computer, set a course for Sigma Sector 8, and it does it. And then there's a bunch of other people standing around pretending to press buttons, but they don't do anything. The Falcon you gotta fly that baby, you gotta caress her gently, you gotta keep her in fine working order with your spanner every once in a while you gotta give her a little love pat you know keep her in, in good order. That that Millennium Falcon is is a one-man show not, not a big bulky enterprise science vessel blah. 32 what is your favorite comic? Uh, there is a set of comic books that I absolutely love called Elf Quest by Richard and Wendy Peeney. Um, it's pretty much one of the first graphic novels that I ever found and read at my own local library. And I have such fond memories of renting those books from the library over and over and over again. Every week I would check them in and check out like the next book and then I'd start over and I would just you know, and I'd spend weekends and summers like in the backyard, laying in the grass, reading Elf Quest, chewing on a stem of grass, and and just like imagining Elf Quest characters and living in the forest holt and riding wolves and ah, this awesome, awesome stuff. 
Uh, 33, which superhero would you like to be? I don't know. I think, like, my answer to this changes all the time. And, and um, right now, I guess I'd say Superman because you can fly and you're pretty much invulnerable. So, like, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. It seems like a cop-out easy answer. Um, I'm not saying that I would fly around in tights with a cape. I'm not even saying I would save people like in the way that he does fight bad guys, whatever. But uh, there's something to said for something to be said uh, for someone being in really nice shape and being able to fly. Um, Thirty-four. When was the last time you had a bad argument with someone? I don't know, honestly. Like, I'm sure that it was with my wife. We, you know, we argue like any married couple. Um, but I can't tell you like what specifically we would have argued about or how long ago it was. I'm sure like, I don't know, in the last two or three weeks, I'm sure we argued, but like a bad argument, I, I don't know. I, I tend to not really, um, I won't say I'd not remember those things, but like, I don't really dwell on disagreements and, um, I tend to focus more on the good times, but, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a good a good story there. Um, 35, how do you eat Oreos? Honestly, I like to mix it up. The first one I take, I might just put the whole thing in my mouth at once and, and chew it up until I can swallow it without gagging. Uh, sometimes I may split it in half and eat the cream and then the cookie, or sometimes I may take a bite of half of it. Sometimes I may dunk it in milk. I actually feel like Eating an Oreo the same way every time is a little boring. I need to be kind of creative with them. And I don't eat Oreos very often. Uh, maybe once a year, to be honest with you. Like, I'll just get a craving for Oreos and milk. Always with milk, for sure. Never never alone. Never with any other drink. Um, but I don't really eat them that often. Like, we have Oreos downstairs now, and I have absolutely no desire to eat an Oreo. 36. Do you have any collections? I have a lot of collections. I'm kind of a collector, um, but I have downsized a lot of my collections in the last couple years, eBay uh, and garage sales and stuff. Um, right, well, I think like one of my first collections was a collection of Masters of the Universe action figures and play sets. Uh, I did end up selling that on eBay a bunch of years ago. Um, I just kind of finally given up on it, and you know the the seven eight hundred bucks that I got for it seemed like a lot better deal than storing it and moving it. Um, don't really regret getting rid of it, but because uh, I I I got so many memories out of it. Um, but I do, so I, and I also had a comic book collection. I got rid of a whole bunch of long boxes of comments, comics, a couple thousand. I think I have one short box left of comics that I just couldn't part with. My Elf Quests, um, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. Uh, I think there's some Jim Burns Next Men comics in there. I don't think I kept any of my main Marvel. Uh, there's some sort of the Atom stuff in there. Um, my Pokemon cards and figures collection, which I've pretty much inherited down to Matt. Uh, I actually sold a ton of Pokemon cards right like before Matt was born. I wish I hadn't done that because I had like the full first set all the way uh, through Team Rocket, through... Uh, I don't even remember all the set names now, but we had a ton of Pokemon cards. And a lot of a lot of hollows, all the promos, basically any Pokemon card we could get our hands on, and little Pokemon figures. And at some point, my older son and I thought we were finally out of them, got rid of them all. And then when Matt kind of got to a certain age, uh, actually when he was learning how to read, I got him Pokemon Platinum, and he loved it. And that's what basically taught him to read more than books, or I guess inspired him to read. And that got me back into Pokemon cards, and we've kind of rebuilt some of our collection, but it's just like random boosters, nothing major. Uh, and then I have like a kind of a small collection of little Minecraft figures, paper craft and stuff. Again, it's kind of Matt's co collection, or I've he he's the keeper of 
my collection of stuff that I've acquired and given to him. 37, what is my middle name? It's Frank. I don't really use it. Um, 38, if you could easily rename yourself IRL, what name would you choose? I really have no idea. Once upon a time, I would have said Gillian, uh, named after the main character from uh, one of my favorite series of books, which is uh, the Paratwa Saga by Christopher Hintz. But um, Gillian doesn't really fit me anymore, so I don't know what I would name myself. Um, I, I don't don't really know what I would name myself. 39, Katie asks, in Fallout, would you rather be turned into a ghoul or a cyborg? I think my answer would be cyborg anytime, anywhere. I think being a ghoul and having your body parts fall off and being undead doesn't, doesn't sound like a lot of fun. I think a cyborg where I can, you know, blast people and x-ray vision them and Use my cyborg parts seems like it's a hands down winner. Do I have any allergies? Question 40. Uh, bee stings. So I found out that I was allergic to bee stings when I was in kindergarten. I was climbing on the monkey bars and I got stung by a bee um, in my eye, like on the eyelid. And my whole eye swelled up or swole, swollen up, swelled up. Um, and you know, I was rushed to the the hospital, and that was dealt with. And I've been allergic to bees ever since. Was stung a few times, um, but nothing major. And uh, you know, when I was growing up, I really haven't been stung as an adult. So who knows? For all I know, it could have could have uh, outgrown the allergy, or it could be even more severe. Who knows? Um, do you have any scars, and how did you get them? I do. I used to want scars <laughs> because I, I thought it would make me seem like I've had an adventurous life. Uh, but I'll, I'll just tell you about some legitimate scars I have on my hands, uh, basically on my knuckles. I have some scars from when I used to do fencing in college. And, um, you know, when we were learning how to fence, we weren't that great at it. So I ended up getting my hand sliced a bit. Um, also on my knuckles from swimming. So the, the plastic lane lines got a little bit too close as I was coming up doing some freestyle. Uh, again, this was in high school and just kind of, you know, scraped my knuckles along the, the ropes and was was bleeding there. And those those scars never really went away. And then I have a scar on one of my legs where I was running on a wooden deck. And my intention was to jump from the top of the stairs all the way down to the bottom during a game of hide and seek tag and I don't know if I chickened out at the last minute or I was trying to dodge somebody or look cool or what but instead of jumping I I did like a baseball slide on a wooden deck and there was a a sliver of wood that went into the side of my leg and it was a pretty big piece of wood and then it broke off and I like stood up and I literally had this, you know, couple inches of wood just sticking out of my leg and I yanked it out, pulled out all the little shrapnel pieces and then, you know, I didn't go to the hospital or anything. It just kind of, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I think I did get two stitches or something, but um, so yeah, I have a scar on my leg from that. Again, not not a major deal. I don't really don't really have anything other than that that I can think of. Uh, Forty-two waffles or pancakes? Definitely waffles. Although I have pancakes more often, and I kind of make decent pancakes that come out of a box mix. Forty-three. If you could change one of your physical attributes, what would it be? I mean, I would definitely love to get back into the shape I was as a sophomore in high school. That was my peak of physical fitness and today I'm probably at the lowest physical shape I've ever been in. Would love to change that attribute. Uh, it's all within my own control but it's related to question 44 which is quick cake or pie. Obviously pie is so much better. Cake? Yeah, I don't know. I'm a pie guy. Okay, home stretch 45. Which do you prefer? Packing or unpacking? I had to think about this one. I actually prefer packing, putting everything in its place, 
organizing things. Um, unpacking just sounds like a lot of work. Then you've got to throw the packing material away. You've got to put the thing away where it needs to go. You've got to decide where it needs to go. I'm not interested in unpacking. Just I'm interested in the process of packing. It's fun. 46. What is your worst fear? Uh, absolutely my worst fear is that my son will get hurt. Uh, as a parent, I have this, you get this physical feeling in your chest when you think of your own kids in danger. Uh, that would be both physical danger or fear that he will someday have a broken heart, uh, which would just break my own heart. That That is my worst fear. 47. Would you rather have the power to fly or breathe underwater? I was tempted to say breathe underwater because I love just floating around underwater, hanging out in the ocean, but... I wouldn't want to breathe underwater because ocean water is icky and tastes gross and there's like green stuff floating in it. I wouldn't want to breathe that into my lungs, so I'll take fly any day. And you know, flying is pretty cool. My favorite holiday, question 48, is Christmas. That's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, Christmas. I mean, come on, presents. 49, can you share a secret about yourself? Whew. Um, I could. I mean, I guess the one that seems most relevant and, and of all the questions I've talked about, um, I feel a lot of times like I do live three separate lives, completely separate lives. There is me at work. There is me on YouTube and playing video games. And then there's me uh, with the family and doing family stuff and house stuff. And for the most part those things don't really overlap anymore they kind of occur at separate times and um, I don't like I don't really bring video game talk into uh, work and I don't really bring work talk into family and I don't really bring family talk into video games um, so it's sort of a strange uh, strange thing to kind of have these completely separate lives so I don't know if that's a secret but it feels like there is a secretive nature to that um, that probably doesn't come across in my videos you guys just see me playing Minecraft maps and building stuff uh, but that's really just such a small sliver of, of who I am so hopefully these these questions and answers have been interesting to you in sort of you know seeing other sides of me as well and the last question is will you sing a song for me of course I'll be happy to do that all the time everyone else should prepare to plug their ears um, this is something that I recorded a couple months ago and I was looking for the right LP to put it into it, it's kind of uh, you know I, I have no problem making fun of myself it's not the greatest singing um, but I enjoyed making it, and I hadn't really found the right LP to use it in, so I'm going to dedicate the following song to everyone listening, but in particular to Jay Gaz Mom, because your 50th question was, will you sing a song for me? Crafting in my three by three mining stone and coal building up my nerd pole tower dig straight down what could go wrong lava burning me up and fire taking my stuff I'm tired of losing my gold There you were with your potion brewing slow fire protection Could I have your last glass bottle? Could I have your nether Cause lava 
burning me up and fire taking my stuff I'm tired of losing my Lava burning me up on fire Taking my stuff, I'm tired of losing my gold All right, so that's it for the Q&A. We're going to go back to regularly scheduled The Color of Infinity and take a look at the Sarlacc Mander Pit and the skiff that I made. I think it looks awesome. See you there.